All right, back again, Luke here. And today what I want to do is kind of continue talking about uh, some arcade hardware that I didn't get a chance to mention in my last video. Maybe I briefly talked about it, but I didn't get a chance to show it uh, in action or show any parts of it uh, because it was stored away. But this that you see right in front of you, this is the Sega Chihiro. And this is the Model 3. Uh, there were a couple of different versions of this one. The first version of this was very similar to the first version of the Sega Triforce. Uh, looked almost very, really similar to it. Had a dim board that clipped onto the top here, or kind of similar to the Naomi 2 over there. But uh, this is the uh, the third version, and this one has a lot bigger memory in it uh, on the side here, as far as the specs go. Uh, where is it? Maybe it's in the back. This thing has a, a gig of memory in it. And uh, it has all of the different ports on the side here. Uh, it has the, um, was it the dim board built into it? And it has a, uh, an Xbox cable here. Uh, I think I mentioned this in the last video as well, but this uh, Chihiro hardware is basically built around the Xbox, the original Xbox. So you'll see some similarities with that. We have our security chip, which is also the same as the ones that you found on the Naomi or on the Triforce. Here's our video out, our VGA. Here's for uh, the I.O. board or the JVS, which controls all the different controls on there. And on the side here, the other side, we have some dip switches. We also have our power in and our audio out. And uh, connected to this, we have our GD-ROM drive. Now, with this setup here, this one's really interesting compared to the other ones. Uh, actually, it's very similar to the Model 3 uh, Triforce sitting over there. Whereas this system itself, you can't put regular carts uh, on it. Uh, it can only be run via either uh, an, what is it, compact flash or by the GD ROM drive itself. So, a very interesting machine here. Uh, a couple of uh, other points about this machine is on the inside here, if we, uh, if we open it up, actually, let's see, let's see if we can open it up here. I'll show you what the inside looks like. And uh, you actually do have to open this up sometimes, uh, depending on what games you're trying to run on it. This system is very, very picky. Uh, and picky to the, scent, uh, it, to the extent that if you think about a PC, a regular PC, and uh, you think about the memory in it, or the RAM that you put in it. Normally, if you put more RAM into your PC, it's pretty happy. Uh, it usually runs a little bit smoother. I mean, generally, if the RAM is matching and, you know, it's, uh, it's much higher than what it originally had in it, it usually uh, enjoys it quite a bit. The Chihiro, on the other hand, actually hates it. And uh, it's really irritating because you have to take these screws out here to get access to the inside of this thing. And... So, there we go. This lid will kind of pop off. Alright. It's hard with all these screws still in here. Let's just take them out. And pick out the last one there. Now, we'll open this thing up and take a look at the inside. And one thing you'll notice here, here are two slots for the RAM. Each one of these uh, RAM chips here is 512 megabits or megabytes um, of RAM. And this is another RAM chip that's laying down there. It's just taped down. Main reason for this is if I put both of these uh, RAM chips in here and I go to turn it on with the game that I have loaded in it, it'll instantly pop up an error 53 and it'll say uh, RAM specs not uh, yes out of spec or something for game. And it won't start the game. It's really, really frustrating. And, uh, you know, so if you take out one of these RAM chips here uh, and just have it with 512, it, it'll start up the game, no problem. But if you have one gig in here, it'll really be picky and it'll say that you can't start up uh, because the specs are wrong. So that's one thing to be careful about with these Chihiro motherboards is that uh, if you don't have the correct amount of RAM that the game needs, it will uh, it'll throw up an error here. So that's why uh, there's only one RAM chip in there right now. Uh, there are some games that do require the, uh, the full set there. And it's always good to have a, a spare 
chip as well, just in case one of them decides to die out if one dies out. But put these screws kind of set these back in here. But uh, yeah, this is the system itself. And it's a, it's a really cool system, like I mentioned, it's based around the Xbox. Some of the games that came out for the Chihiro, I might have mentioned this in the last video as well, but uh, some of those games being, was it Ghost Squadron was one of them, uh, Crazy Taxi High Roller, uh, what is it, Maximum Tuned, uh, or Wangan, uh, Midnight Maximum Tune. I have Maximum Tune 2. That's a racing game. House of the Dead 3 was another one that came out on this. And uh, there is, I think there's a, a few more. It doesn't have a huge, huge library for it, but it does have uh, some pretty good games for it. Oh, the other one. <laughs> one that I shouldn't have forgotten was um, Outrun 2. Or Outrun 2 SP, I think, special. Um, or two of the games that uh, were also released for this. So the few games that it does have on it, it really does have some powerhouse kind of games for it. Some really great games. Uh, there's not a lot of junk on it, but there's not a lot of games on it in general. So, but uh, I've had this thing sitting around for a while and was never able to get this thing to fully turn on because I was running the cables here from the VGA port on the side into my I.O. board and I plugged it in and uh, all I would get is just like a, a flashing screen, like a scrolling screen and I tried messing with the dip switches here and I, I wasn't even sure, you know, I couldn't find uh, a manual for this one so at the time when I was messing around with it, I think this was even before I moved out to this place here, uh, I was trying to mess around with the dip switches and I'm like, ah, I can't get this thing to, you know, work. Arr, what's going on? You know, so uh, I needed to get sound here. So I've got the sound plugged into this. This one's plugged into my Capcom IO. That's running through the cab. And then I went and took a look at the, uh, the cab and that thing had a VGA out on it. So I ran this cable up to the monitor on the VGA, um, uh, out on the cab, changed around the dip switch settings inside here so that the VGA cable would actually be turned on so I could get the uh, signal from there into here. And lo and behold, I got this thing to work. So, and then when I first started this thing up, uh, it was throwing up all kinds of different errors like, oh, can't find motor and can't find uh, all this other great stuff. <laughs> so I went through the dip switch settings, changed all that stuff off, and this thing's ready to go. All I have to do is get out that monster of a steering wheel for Sega Race TV, if you guys remember that, and uh, wire that thing up <laughs> or set that thing back up somewhere where I can use it. And I should be able to make a gameplay video of the game that I will show you here well, as soon as I can open this up. Do -do. Turn this on, and uh, I have the power supply running off of a different uh, jack here. It's just got the uh, a regular plug on it, so I have to plug this one in second. And let's turn this off here. Uh, that's a little loud. You can see it says initializing the media board here. And then it, I think the battery for this one's still fairly decent. I'm not sure. Yeah, it should be all right. But uh, yeah, it's working out pretty good. You can see handle check okay, everything else is okay. And before that would just throw up an error. Uh, you can see it's doing its countdown there. But uh, here we go. It's not a, a very long intro, but I'm really glad that I can change around the dip switches in this game on the Chihiro, because I can't do it on the 246 uh, for Ridge Racer 5, but here we go. And there is Wangan, uh, Maximum Midnight Tune, 
so. Sounds pretty awesome in here with the, uh, the bass kind of bouncing through the, uh, the Blast City. This thing is kind of irritating. I hate this. <laughs> you know, I think it's just only for the uh, the demo mode while it's rolling through the demo mode. But it just says right now the card reader. Uh, you can't use the card reader. So. But uh, yeah, I'll let this thing, you guys will be able to see maybe a little bit of uh, the driving. I think it'll go through demo, yeah. So it's one that I'll finally be able to play here as soon as I get uh, everything wired up. I might have to go and change around the uh, the Tate uh, set up here with the Frank and Cade. I put that monitor back down so I can mount the steering wheel there. That might be the best uh, best way to go as of right now because that steering wheel for the Sega Race TV is just really heavy. So. And hopefully this I.O. will work. This is the Sega I.O., but I know that Namco games, these things are really picky. They almost always have to have a, a Namco kind of setup for them in order to work, but... Kind of wish the uh, the intro stayed on a little bit longer. Let's see, I wonder if uh, if I put in a coin. Let's try. I haven't done this yet. No, it's on free play. Of course. Why would it? <laughs> I put it on free play. Huh? Does it start? No, nope, because I have everything else wired into the other I/O. So that means without the uh, the other steering wheel and everything set up, I can't do anything. All I can do is just watch the uh, limited amount of. Uh, music that rolls through here and just hope that that other steering wheel setup will let this thing start up and play it should work out i'm hoping you know but once again with namco you gotta love them but you gotta hate them as well because all of their stuff has like a special namco io board but as you guys can see here here's the setup in action and uh, you can see all the lights are all glowing down there the, uh, the I.O. here and the GD-ROM drive and all that good stuff but yeah just figured I'd show you guys a little bit about the Chihiro and show you a little bit of Wangon uh, Midnight Maximum Tune here running on the Blast City as of right now in demo mode hopefully I'll be able to get everything wired up and uh, do some gameplay on this eventually but uh, yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching.